There's been like a lot of Dragon Ball game related things that have been coming out recently. One that I'll get out of the way really quick, which I don't want to talk about too much, is Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, I believe the game is called. They got a new DLC announced, which is uh, pretty much a DLC that covers the end of Z of Dragon Ball Z. If you don't know, at the end of Dragon Ball Z, there's kind of like a time skip and like it shows kind of everyone a lot older. Goku's in his blue gi that I feel like a lot of people love. And they're making a DLC to cover that portion of the game, which is dope. And honestly, I've been loving how they've been treating this game. I remember when Kakarot was first announced, it looked like pretty much a definitive version to play through dbz i was hoping they would just pretty much dlc out all the content so like they would have a dlc for future trunks and they do and they would have a dlc for end of z and they're doing it and i i feel like they have the other dlc i think they have a bardock dlc i'm not 100 sure if they have dlc for like super stuff that'd be dope like i would love if they have a battle of gods and a resurrection of f universe 6 versus 7 tournament if they had tournament of power dlc if they just cover all of those things that'd be cool i'm not sure if they will 100 because i believe the game is branded dragon ball z kakarot technically that stuff is dragon ball super but i I don't really know if they care about that or not so hopefully they will cover those things because again Kakarot I, I have it I own it and I own some of the DLCs I played it for like about 10-15 hours and I fell off at some point not because the game was bad because I kind of sucked at a fight and I, could, I couldn't beat it uh, because I am famously horrible at games that is something I do want to get back to but it was beautiful because usually Dragon Ball games are made with the focus of like PvP or like you're supposed to be balanced with your opponent like whatever your opponent can do you can do that's kind of like how Dragon Ball Z games have always been but Kakarot I feel Feel like was the first in a while where like when you're fighting someone or you're fighting a boss it felt like a boss like i think i was fighting radis and he started doing this cool ass move where you're shooting rays and he was spinning and stuff and i'm like i don't think that's a move that i would be able to do as a character but as a boss fight you should be able to do like cool ass moves like that and actually for the first time ever for me playing a dragon ball game it felt like i was fighting a boss and that was only radis level so imagine once you get to like cell and once you get to a boo i feel like those would be even more epic and if you ever get to i don't know if they have like beerus or like jiren one day or something that'd be hella dope so end of z dlc is exciting because they're actually covering more of the game and i know kind of got away of talking about end of z since that is an announcement but like that kind of proves that they're trying to cover like every inch of dragon ball so hopefully they'll keep expanding it and we'll see how they go into the future but now now that we're done with kakura let's go into the real shit i want to talk about the real shit and that's dragon ball sparking zero oh when they announced this game it was like a weight lifted off my shoulders if you guys don't know what dragon ball sparking zero is there used to be a dragon ball budokai tenkaichi series on the playstation 2 budokai tenkaichi 2 was my shit budokai tenkaichi 3 was my shit and this pretty much is a budokai tenkaichi 4 they just rebranded it to sparking zero because i believe the sparking name was what they use in japan i don't know if that's true really because budokai tenkaichi is a japanese term so i don't know why they would use like an english name in japan and a japanese name in the west but apparently it was called sparking in japan so they rebranding it to sparking zero here and so far the game looks fantastic like i love how it looks i love like they're sticking to a stylized style kind of like kakarot it looks like a lot like kakarot honestly which i'm happy i'm, I'm really happy they're stepping away from that xenoverse style which they've kind of been using in like all of the games and so the fact that we're getting this more stylized style is just really interesting and like the, the the main thing that i loved about buruka tenkaichi and i feel like a lot of people love is like you just have such a fucking huge cast of characters like you could have so many people you get to play as and that 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 was a positive especially these days when you have fighting games i feel like a lot of people like to focus on like yeah i just want a small roster of characters and they all play different i don't give a fuck about that in tenkaichi 3 you had like i don't know the exact number but it felt like you had like 300 characters and while they technically played the same like you can like jump to any character and be fine they had different animations they had different supers and like it just felt fun to play as people like you would play as kid boo and he'd be stupid fucking fast and you'd play as like an ozaru and they'd be like hella slow the combat in it i felt like was more advanced than what we get today like you were able to punch people directionally like from the bottom or top and i think it might have been left and right too it was one of those you go block in directions you could do like combos that like felt like secrets that like they didn't really explain in the game like there's so much depth in the game low key that i hope they keep that exact dna for sparking zero so one of the things i was afraid of with sparking zero is like i hope they keep a huge roster and based on the trailers it seems like that's the focus they're going for the trailers that we've gotten so far they literally end with the roster screen and the roster filling up with what they showed in the trailer and so they did that with this last trailer where they pretty much showed goku going Going through every single transformation he has which i thought was perfect that's exactly what i want there's a couple of worries i do have about the game one worry is what the modern dragon ball games do which i fucking hate is that they make every transformation its own character so like in xenoverse like super saiyan 1 will be a character i think super saiyan 3 will be a character for example super saiyan god will be a character like instead of like you being able to just use goku and transform they're their own characters and the best thing about budokai tenkaichi was like if you used buu saga goku you can go super saiyan 1 then you can go to 2 then you can go 3 whatever made sense in that 
Canon version of Goku, you're able to do that. If you use GT Goku, you can turn into Super Saiyan 4, like things like that. But at the end of the Sparking Zero trailer, even though it showed in the gameplay Goku transforming from base to like God, when they showed the roster, they put Super Saiyan God as its own character and they put some of the Super Saiyans as their own characters. So I don't know what that's about. Hopefully they aren't their own characters or if they are like, hopefully they're just representing different versions of Goku. So maybe they're just using Super Saiyan 3 to represent the Buu version of Goku and they're using Super Saiyan God to represent the Battle of Z Goku. That would make sense, I guess, for visual disparity. I hope it's not like Zero Xenoverse where like, if I'm using God Goku, I'm just God Goku. If I press God Goku, I want him to be base and then I have to transform into God or like go from one to two to three to God. Like doing that Buruga Tenkaichi was always the coolest feeling. So hopefully they stick with that for Sparking Zero. And another worry I have, this isn't a real worry. It's just something I noticed in the trailer is the environment to me looked kind of lacking. And Buruga Tenkaichi 3 is not like the environments were like amazing fidelity wise because it was a PS2 game, but it was pretty fun going to the environment. Everything was destructible. All the buildings were, all the hills were. You could go underwater. It was cool. But the actual fidelity of this game's environment looks PS2 adjacent. Like it, like it looked kind of empty. Now I don't want it to be full or anything. I just, I, I just hope that it does look a bit better graphically because usually what you see in games these days is the characters can look lacking, but the environment looks beautiful. This game is kind of the opposite, which is weird. But again, I, I literally have zero worries about this because this is just a trailer. Things will change, and I'm sure the environment is not a focus for them right now. Like why would it be? Like focus on the characters, focus on the combat, and the environment just spruce up as time goes on. So that is one thing I noticed. And even if it ever releases and the environment still looks the same, like I don't, I don't give a shit. As long as they have a ton of characters and the combat is fun, I'll be okay with it. But that is just something I wanted to uh, talk about because that is something I noticed in the Sparking Zero trailer.